Houston Astros. I don't know what the hell's going on, but nobody does. This uh that got me thinking. Listen, people. I asked Nick a question and we couldn't come up with an answer. Well, we're about to figure it out, but y'all gotta help us. Who sucks in this situation? The team or Dusty? I'm a Dusty hater, so I'm gonna say Dusty. It you look at the talent, you look at what they have, and then you look at where they're placed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we've talked about this countless podcasts and videos. What's working, what's not working, who's working, who's not working at their spot. I mean, most of you fans on our Facebook and YouTube have been commenting about the lineups. I'll just post the lineup of people like, why is this happening? Why is that happening? So I want to say that we should all agree it's a dusty problem. Mm -hmm. Because you talked about it a few weeks ago where you do not move uh, Alvarez and Tucker. No, it should be your 3-4 no matter what. Yes. And it's such a non-issue that they're both lefties that today we got fucking shut out by the Brewers for the second straight game. But when they went to the bullpen, they had a lefty warming and a righty warming, two runners on, one out, and they brought a right-handed pitcher in because they know that you don't get a lefty advantage with this situation. So, like, it doesn't matter that they're lefty-lefty anymore. Yeah. And Dusty insists on every series switching it up. And one time he'll go Dusty Tucker, and then he'll go Dusty Abreu Tucker. And that sucks. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, I get it. Dusty knows what he's talking about, I guess. But then I just – there's instances where I just think he gets out coached. I think he overcoaches himself also. Like, I feel like he doesn't do anything. Like, he he doesn't – he doesn't coach at all. It's like, like they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it out, or they'll it, they'll it'll work itself out. Yeah, before game four games went by, bro. Before it figured yeah. itself out, <laughs> they'll figure it out by October. That's when I really coach. It, it it it's just like you see other managers like change their lineups up. All right, this isn't working. Let's do this. Let's move here. And I mean, as fans, like taking all the GM stuff out, just as fans, you look at Abreu. And and I'm not saying he's – I don't want him in the lineup. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't want him that damn high up. Word. Put you you towards the bottom. Go towards uh, Maldonado, bro. Like, let's – even if you don't watch baseball like that, you know pretty much the top of your lineup is your 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 stack, and then that's like, oh, I got the bottom of the line. So you, that's what right. pisses me off is you have these games where that that six, seven, eight hitter are on fire. McCormick, Myers, Joe. And it's like, damn, man, these dudes are getting on base or whatever. And or you'll get a double out of jokes in the seventh hole. And it's like, and that would have been real good if Abreu was on base. I just feel like there's a, to me, this is just me. Maybe I'm full of shit. There's an importance to keep the top of that lineup like the same so you'll know where to put Dubon when he's playing. For instance, if he's playing for Altuve, then you just fill that leadoff spot. But if you're playing for Bregman, then you just bump down Altuve one spot and leave Dubon in that, you know what I'm saying? So there's not a big change. And there's just no reason Pena should be so far down in the lineup because he gets on base more than anybody. Like, would you put Pena behind Tucker? I almost want to say no. I would put Bregman behind Tucker and put Pena in the two hole. I think, and I was thinking that too because Pena gets a lot of base hits. Yes, and your your cousin yeah. hit two home runs the other day, bro. Yeah. So like, and Tucker's been streaky, but that just is what it is because Tucker's always that way. Yeah, And then I don't fault him because he was kind of on fire in the Cubs series and he had the walk-off and you get bumped down a, a spot for a Abreu. That had to fuck with him. That's why I don't like all these changes. Yeah, and it, and then he goes back to what was working. And it's like, for what? What was the point of this shit? Like, just leave it the way it was, man. Like, Take the pressure off of Abreu and put him in, like, the seventh hole and, and leave the pressure on Jolks and McCormick to – and to bat in that five, six hole, you know what I'm saying? Or put yeah. Bregman in the five hole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like the Dubon, Pena, Alvarez, Tucker, like that's, 
Yes. That's hard. And then even if you switch Dubon and uh and Athuva, that's I mean, damn, I like that. I also worry that sometimes with Bregman in the two hole, if it's like a a live ball that Jordan's gonna catch him on the base pad. I think Bregman is slow. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's lost a, a, a step here or there. And another thing is, is I like Bregman batting behind Tucker because, for one, Bregman walks a shit ton. Bregman sees a lot of pitches. The more pitches Bregman sees in the five spot means that there's more chances for Tucker to steal the base. Mm-hmm. And that's what Tucker likes to do. It's setting you up. It's dusty. All you got to do is listen, man. All you got to do is listen. Try it. Just try it once. Try it once. It like, just pisses me off that, like, you had people, like, no disrespect, but, like, our old dumbass fans. And then even people like Caleb, they're like, we're so worried about our pitching. And we were like, no, chill the fuck out. That'll be fine. Now we're the best staff in baseball. And you can't score runs. Yeah. And, and I think it's, like, for, like, the pitchers – like people always, and I think it's just there's a lot of people because there's times where I'll be like, "Damn it, Brandon!" Be like, "Like what the hell?" And then I look at the score and I'm like, "Dude, you're only down 0-2." Yes. If, if he, if your team loses 0-2 at this moment, that's your offense's fault. They didn't give this. No reminds damn me of the year we lost to the Braves in the World Series. Is that year we were streaky as fuck? We had games where we just couldn't score. It, I told you earlier, we're like an NBA team that shoots threes. We live and die by it. You know what I mean? Yep. There's no reason you score 12 runs against the Brewers on five home runs and then you get shut out for 18 innings. That's what we do to people. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that it, it, These last two games were terrible. I don't even want to remember them. Um, and and you had, we had asked the question on our YouTube, uh, who gets it first, Abreu or Montero? Because they're both atrocious right now. Mm-hmm. But you had said Montero, you think, gets it better figures it out faster. I do think it's Montero because he he still has his velocity. He's still getting his pitches. He just has no command, no control. Uh that's one of those situations where he simply could just take a break. Yeah. This is one of those things where you like you could get into the rhythm of something just by watching it for long enough. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and that's what he needs. Yeah. And I think, I think at least for him, I think it's a little easier too because you have so many pitchers, relief pitchers that can take up the, the spot for him. Whereas Abreu, everybody every week is oh look what your look what yeah uh uh oh my god Yuri Yuli Gurriel is doing look what Yuli Gurriel is doing look what Yuli Gurriel is doing, and then you have people like oh just replace him with this guy replace him with that guy and so for Abreu that has to play pretty much every game, mm-hmm. it's a little more but it's like. I do. I just feel dusty. You're not doing him a service. I get he has to play. I, I understand that you only get better if you play at most times in sports, but I don't need you. It's like me putting him on the free throw line for in basketball and he can't shoot free throws. Like, and I'm like, he's just going to figure it out. There are a lot of statistical categories that he's getting better at Yeah, because he was doing really bad. Now he's just doing bad. Yeah. So he's trending in the right direction, but also it's like when you get put in the lineup between Jordan and Tucker, that comes with the level of responsibility that you're not fulfilling. Yeah, and like there was not were... a scenario, excuse me, a scenario at all where you put Yuli's dumbass in between them. <laughs> like if they would have put Pena there, I'd have been like, okay, let me see how this works out. Like he deserves it, but it's. Somebody that's struggling, like, all right, you're doing really good. Let me put this guy that's struggling in between you that's doing really good and see if that boosts him in a way. Oh, no, all three of y'all did bad now. Great, amazing. And it's just like, it, it, it's common sense. Like, oh, a Braves after him? I'm a pitch this fool. Whatever happens, happens. I think you, you said it like a million times. Like, sometimes Dusty is so predictable. Like, we know – how long the starter's going to go, what reliever's going to come in and what inning, and then what reliever's going to come in after him. And, yada, and it's like, bro, you think other teams don't know this shit either? Yeah, if I'm watching at home, figure. We've yeah. we've had jokes where we're watching lies and we're like, all right, Hector Neris is coming in. Oh. oh. It's just, it's just see, that's how he gets out coached. Like, I get it. He goes for the 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 season in totality. Like, he, he thinks think things play it, work itself out. 
which is true to an extent, but it's like you have to be somewhat proactive, bro, especially when you have this much talent. And do you think him winning has been, I guess, taking him a step down? Because it felt like last year he had a lot more pressure on him, of course, with the not winning and never winning and having the team. I mean, but he also had like some vets out there like Verlander and them that could really like, hey, coach, I got you. Don't worry type of thing. And then this time you have younger guys that needed to come in and step up and you're kind of just like, oh, well, they're, they'll figure it out. Like, I think the question is, is Dusty getting a lot of reprieval, a little slack on account of we've been hurt? Might be also that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's what it is. Like, he better thank God for Dubon and Jake Myers and what they've done. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because there's a strong possibility we could have lost so many games. So I, I just feel like there's opportunities for Dusty to do things that he doesn't do it. It's like my, we know Montero's not pitching great. Yeah. Give him a break. Where's Stanek been? I haven't seen Stanek. Yeah, I haven't. He came in in that that blowout game <laughs> like an idiot. But like last year, you yeah. would pitch him three games in a row. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Today, we're losing. Like, why don't you just pitch Mouton for two innings? I, yeah. I just don't understand. Like, he's lazy, bro. Like, he has his mind made up what he's going to do before the game starts, and then he doesn't think about it again, I don't feel like. like. Montero, I'm not saying I'm right about that, but from yeah. the outside looking in, that's what it feels like. Yeah, because it's like, I already knew Montero was coming back out again. It, it felt like a dusty me. Like, I'm going to get you back out there to see if you can and fix it. And it's like, bro, he struggled. Like, I don't want to see this again. And there we go. It's like, man, let me ask you this. This is just my question. Anybody watching it, you comment on this. I sometimes feel like some of our players don't like Dusty. It's not that they dislike Dusty, but they don't like him either. And then yeah. you have people like Bagwell who make it sound like they worship his the ground he walks on. And I was like, I don't feel that, you know? Like, I think it's a mutual respect thing. Like, Yeah, I think it's, a, it's it done. goes back to the pawpaw thing, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I, I respect yeah, my grandpa, grandpa, but you still yeah. smell like Marlboro, motherfucker. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, we've talked, and, and there's a lot of people that won't agree with us that, the dusty thing um and i mean i get it he's won a championship he's a hall of fame coach this and that but it's just like we watch astro games we watch them pretty much all the time whenever they're on i want we watch highlights whenever they're off we listen to interviews we and it's just you can tell like i would take a his, day off to watch a good game shit even his interviews like he'll be like oh you know it's just it's like, yeah, I mean, you're like, I just it. think that people saying like defending Dusty makes it seem like we hate him more. Yeah. Because like, I feel like it's our right as Astros fans, especially as dumbasses that spend hundreds of dollars on World Series merch. We have the right to critique you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do what we say, but you can't stop me from saying that I think you were wrong in this. And then people like defend Dusty in a sense like they act like we never would have won shit without him. And I was like, hold on. Like, I don't want to be so brass to say that anybody would have won us the World Series last year. But I'm going to say that a lot of people could have won the World Series as our manager last year. Yeah, there's there's a few managers that that for sure um, with that pitching staff. That's yes. Yeah. And a Jordan. Yeah. People forget about Jordan. <laughs> Unless you're Seattle, you don't forget about it. The jet bag will say it. He's like, it's no, it's no debate. He's the best hitter in the world. Straight up. Ooh, that's gonna be a good one on a video. Eh. Yeah. Well, because like they showed today his like I forgot his number of at bats, but today he had this through like four seasons. They compared it was like not just say nineteen hundred career at bats or whatever. It's probably more than that. And then they compared his to Aaron Judge's, and their batting average was almost the same. And their home runs were almost the same. And I mean, literally within a point or two. But RBI wise, Jordan blew this fool out of the water. And I was like, yeah, we got us an RBI machine here. Thank you, Dodgers. Hey. We'll get it together. If not, Dusty will get fired. Basically, the answer to the question is I blame Dusty in this scenario. 
if I had to point the finger at something. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't be mad at it at all. I mean, something's going on. You you can't sit here and be like, oh, it's fine. They'll figure it out. No, this is happening too many times. I mean, it is atrocious that Framber Valdez, your best ace, has the worst runs as a starter pitcher. Yeah, he has a losing record, or he might be four and four at this point, but he's number six in the whole MLB and ERA. It's like, come on, man. We can't do that to Fromber. Yeah, it's like that's messed up. Get him some damn run support, man. Get him some run support. Get all of them because like BLA gave up four runs today on three home runs, but it's like that shit was spaced out so far. We could have won that game. Yeah. JP France didn't pitch terribly against <laughs> the Brewers. Yeah. It's like you we didn't you you can't expect your pitchers to go out there and just shut out, shut out, shut out, shut out. Give them run support. That that would help out a ton. Uh, score six. Oh. Do something. Yeah. Astro fans, I don't know. Y'all let us know. I know some of y'all are gonna be saying that we're haters, that we don't like them, that we need to jump off the bandwagon. I don't really care about it because if you watch these two games, if you watch 18 innings of scoreless <laughs> baseball and you sit here and say it's fine, then you're just lying to yourself because something's going on. We've seen it. I, and if you are a hater of Jose Abreu and saying that he sucks, I definitely don't want to hear from you because something's going on and it needs to change. And let's yep. help him out moving down the line. All right. Yeah. We're not haters of Abreu. We're haters of his batting spot. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I don't know. Like, Well, you know, we live in such a big ass city. You can't expect everybody to agree on anything. And it is what it is. I still think we're going to win the division. We're still going to be in the ALCS. We're going to be there when it counts. This is why I don't go on our Facebook. <laughs> what happened? Total BS, Dusty, about Abreu. Both Abreu and Pena need to go down to AAA. <sighs> Jeremy Pena will never see AAA again unless it's a rehab assignment. A break you either, not for twenty million dollars. Oh shoot, that's funny. Yep. All right, fans, y'all. <laughs> keep it classy, keep it up. Let us know what you think. Is it dusty? Is it the team? Is it just luck? Bad luck. Yeah. Um, y'all make sure you like, subscribe for all Astro stuff. We got you covered as the whole season goes on. We'll be doing some lives with y'all. Uh check Word. out our Facebook. Got you covered in all breaking news for sure over there. Man, y'all have a good one, Houston. Be safe. We out. Peace. How much I'm working for this? I swear my dreams are too important.